Madam Speaker, uh, I'd like to uh, yield three minutes to the distinguished gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Kirk, who is a member of the uh, full committee, uh, who, is, who has worked very diligently on a lot of these issues that uh, involve the legislative branch, even though he is uh, not on the subcommittee. He has worked very diligently, and especially regarding the, the visitor center and making sure that uh, members uh, have the opportunity to bring their guests on throughout the Capitol and get a, get a quality tour that uh, from the state's perspective from where they're from. So again, I would yield three minutes to the gentleman from Illinois. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Illinois for three minutes. I, I thank my colleague and rise in very strong support for this uh, bipartisan legislation. I particularly want to thank Mr. Adderholt and our chair, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, for uh, putting together this legislation. Uh, I have worked on this legislation in the past, particularly to build a staff gym, which is now uh, one of the great successes of uh, this institution, but lately was particularly concerned with a decision quietly made that gave the architect of the Capitol Redcoats apparently the exclusive power to control Capitol tours in the Capitol. It's clear now that they abused this power. They blocked staff-led tours. Uh, of the Capitol and on Facebook set a record for poor customer service in condemning congressional staffs, uh, politically uh, naively enough, majority and majority staffs and saying what a bad work, uh, what piece of work that they did. Now many members uh, came together under the leadership of Chairman Wasserman Schultz concerned about this power grab in the People's House. While the CVC attempted uh, changes, uh, they maintained that they still wanted to uh, control access to the Capitol, turning away one of our members who had four mayors visiting here, but they only had three tickets. Now what this legislation uh, now does, as written by the chairwoman, is that we have fired the Redcoats' ability uh, to control access to the Capitol by members of Congress and their staff. Uh, that if constituents come in from whatever district, uh, that uh, members should now know that your staff can get your constituents into the Capitol to see it. We have also uh, uh, removed the restraints so that you can see all provisions of the Capitol, especially, for example, my constituents and many other who have seen this institution on C-SPAN and want to look at it, and now we can get it, get it in there. I want to uh, particularly thank the leadership on this legislation because we have returned a sense of order and control to make sure that the people who were elected to represent them actually can bring them into the Capitol. As I said in full committee, this institution can be quite frustrating, like yesterday. And the one thing that we can guarantee that was under our control is that we could guarantee that our constituents have a good experience in the Capitol. That had been denied by the Redcoats. This legislation returns that, uh, that uh, control. I want to particularly thank uh, 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 Jenny Disa and uh, Liz Dawson on our side, and Ian Rader uh, uh, and uh, Congresswoman uh, Wasserman Schultz's staff for helping out, and Brett Davis of my staff who, uh, who helped bring this together. I also want to thank uh, uh, Congressman Dave Lobsack and Jim Moran who helped me out so much. We see ourselves as somewhat institutionalists here. I, I started working here as a staffer in 1984. And uh, while the CVC is quite impressive, its restrictions were beginning to deny a number of members of Congress uh, uh, the uh, opportunity to show it to their constituents. This legislation Gentlemen's restores that access. And I, I yield back.